the Kingdom Agenda Worship Center. Kingdom building. Come on, somebody. Is y'all with me this morning? I preach hard because of all this hard mess coming up against me. I'm talking about loving God. Are you a sheep or a goat this morning? You got to run that race, work out your own salvation. But in order for you to do that, your heart got to become like flesh. It's now time for the word. The word. Uplifting. Powerful. The living word. When you go up in heaven, he ain't going to see what you did. He going to say, are you covered by my son's blood? Word with Pastor Felicia White. Commit yourself to the blood is my title this morning. And um, we have a place where you can have write your notes and whatnot. And, you know, as the Lord was giving me this message, commit yourself to the blood, God was showing me, uh, you know, that we do a whole bunch of things. Amen. But have we really committed ourselves to the blood? Because I know Jesus committed himself to the cross. But are you committing yourself to the blood? There's trials and tribulations choking you from committing yourself to the blood. I can only think about when Moses and the Israelites, they was in the desert. Amen. And uh, let me get my message right here so I can say this thing right. But it wasn't in the desert. They had to, there was a death angel that was going to come in Egypt and strike every firstborn of the Egyptians and everybody else that didn't serve God. The animals, the firstborn of the first, if it's a little child, it was going to be the firstborn of that child, whoever it was. If it was a grown man, if he was the firstborn, he was going to die. Firstborn of every animal, every, everything that they had. God says, I'm going to strike it dead because they're not obeying me. They're not trusting in me. They're not serving me. They're serving other gods, but me. They believe in Ray Ray and not believing in Jesus Christ. Come on now everything they're committing themselves to everything that's one of the things pastor carla said to me this morning i was talking about the word and what i was going to preach about this morning and pastor carla was saying something like you know how you commit yourself what does commit mean commit you feel like when you say the word commit it feel like bondage you can't do nothing when you commit somebody commit yourself amen to someone it's like bondage you can't move you can't do nothing you know how some of you married you know committed yourself to your spouse hopefully you can move this morning but you know how you commit yourself to something? You got to do it. You got to have integrity. You got to be trustworthy. Amen. However, Pastor Carlos says, but however, Pastor, when you commit yourself to the Lord, that's where the freedom comes from. Think about it. When you commit yourself to anything else, you're chained up. But when you commit yourself to God, you're loose. You hear what I'm saying? It's a different type of commitment. Amen. It's not the same type of commitment when you commit yourself unto the Lord. That's when you become free in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Anything else though you commit yourself to, you bound to it. To death do you part to some things, to your spouse and to other things. You're bound to it. Amen. But to Jesus Christ, you're free. So God sent the death angel and said, look, I want you to every Israelite that has a home in Egypt. I want you to make sure they take a blood. Oh, I got to read that thing. I'm going to read it. I'm going to go to it. Take a, take a lamb without spot or wrinkle. Somebody say without spot or wrinkle. See, this lamb was a replica of Jesus Christ. If you look in the Old Testament, you see Jesus from Genesis to Revelations. He just wasn't born when Mary had him. I don't want to mess your world up today. He was in the beginning. Amen. The word was in the beginning. And Jesus is the word. Amen. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word is God. Who is the word? Jesus. So he was always there. Amen. When God says let us make man in our own image. Who was God talking to? It wasn't Satan. It was Jesus. Jesus. And the Holy Ghost. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. So when they was in Egypt, God says, I want you to get a lamb without spot or wrinkle. It can't have nothing. The firstborn of every lamb and kill it. Take that blood that has no sin. Y'all here with me? That blood that has no sin. And I want you to put it over your doorpost. They made like a cross over the doorpost. And when that death angel came in and destroyed every firstborn of Egypt, every child, 
and every animal, every firstborn. Somebody say firstborn. firstborn. Uh-huh. They destroyed, everything was destroyed except the houses that had the blood on it. Are you covered by the blood today? See, he's your protector. He's your deliverer. He's your healer today. He's your sanctifier. He's your justifier. He's your rose in your sharing today. He's the lily of your valley. Amen. He's everything you need. You don't need nobody else. You really don't. All you need is Jesus. Amen. You need to be committed to the blood. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word today. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Father, you said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Father, you said that heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall last forever. You said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Father, help us to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church today. Are you committed to the blood of Jesus Christ? As we make a declaration of who you are and make a proclamation of the word of God today. Have your way in this service. Have our Spanish people, believers, Lord God, understand what the word is saying today. Are you committed to the blood? In Jesus' name, let the church say amen, amen. and amen. Commit yourself to the blood. Hebrews chapter 9, starting with verse 11. Help me out, Pastor 4. When Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, that is not man-made. Uh -huh. That is to say, not a part of this creation. Uh. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once and for all by his own blood. Hold it, hold it. Once for all. Underline that in your Bibles if you got an ink pen. We don't have to sacrifice no heifers, no goats, no calves. No nothing. Help her sit down and thank her for coming. But we're covered by the blood. When Jesus died on the cross and he shed his blood, he who without sin, that's all we needed was the blood of Jesus Christ. Back in those days, they had to sacrifice goats. They had to sacrifice sheep. They had to sacrifice everything once a year. They had to bring all of their sin to the tabernacle. And that priest had to make sure that he was right. Because he would have died in the tabernacle. They used to tie a bell around his, his ankle. And, 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 and it had a bell at the end. But then the rope stood out of the tabernacle. Y'all hear me this morning. And if that pastor wasn't right, then that pastor would be dead in the tabernacle. So that rope had to be outside the tabernacle because it was so holy. Somebody say holy. holy. If that priest would have went up in there and he had sin, he would have died. But see, the tabernacle was so holy, couldn't nobody go in there but the priest. So if he would have died, they couldn't just run on up in there. They had to pull the rope out. And the priest will be coming with it. So the priest got to live upright. The pastor's got to live upright. I said the pastor's got to live upright. We always talking about the sheep. What about the pastors? I ain't gonna go there this morning. I ain't gonna go there. Come on. But see, when Jesus died on that cross, that was the ultimate sacrifice. You can't sacrifice no more goats or chicken. I know some of y'all into witchcraft and voodoo and you think that's gonna do something, but the devil is a lie. <laughs> I'm covered by the blood. Try to put a curse on me with a goat all you want to. 
putting hair on my door, rocks, hair, clothes. I think that's going to do something to me. What? Don't you know the price that my life was paid for? What? Can't put no curse on me. I don't care how many chicken bones. If you blood bought today, look to somebody and say, if you blood bought today, say no weapon, say no weapon, say no weapon, formed against you shall prosper. No weapon. What y'all afraid of? Are you really saved? Y'all running. My auntie put a curse on me when I was born. If you've been born again, say it's over. Say it's over. Come on now, y'all know y'all relatives now. Auntie Betsy. And Grandma Lucy. Bathing in leaves. And you're supposed to be blood bought. Don't you know how rich that blood is? You can't even pay for it. We learned about his grace alone, amen? Well, his grace is the blood. Couldn't nobody touch that? Look, let me, let me just wait, shake y'all up this morning. They didn't kill him. He laid his life down. Who gonna kill God? What? And that blood that came out of his side. What? Save you, me, Forgives you, me, heals you, me, deliver you, me, sanctify you, me, justify you, me. Y'all done lost your mind. If you think hair can do something to you. I don't care how long they boil it. The devil is the devil. The devil what? He's supposed to be under your feet. You don't know what the devil, he just, I thought Jesus says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. What are you afraid of? Look to somebody and say, what are you afraid of? Say, don't you know who you sit next to? Come on, slap somebody and say, I'm covered. By the blood, say I'm covered by the blood. Can't nothing touch that. I feel like hammer. Can't touch this. No, I'm just kidding. You got to know who you are today. You got to know about that blood is so precious. You know that oh the blood of Jesus. It's a cute song, but it's the truth. It washes white as snow. I need that thing to wash me every day. How about y'all? How many y'all, how many y'all need that blood to wash you? My mind, my soul, my toes, my hands, my thoughts, my tongue. I needed to wash everything in me. Every day. And I'm the pastor. Oops. Now, if I need that washing every day, now I know y'all scoundrels. Come on. Because I ain't going to come to church. Y'all going to see me dead. You better walk in repentance every day. And say every day. 
You better walk it. Don't wait till next week and repent for something you did last week. And he done poured his blood out for you. And you're going to wait on him. What? Don't you know the cost of that blood? Do you really know? Because if you knew, you wouldn't be. Y'all scared of stuff. Y'all scared of everything. People say, I'm putting a curse on you, so I'm going to put one on you back. Because God says, whatever I bind in earth, he'll bind in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth, he'll loose in heaven. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I'm a royal priest, so don't you know I'm a holy nation? I was a people that didn't know God, but now I'm a people that belong to God. Oh, I used to be out there in my mess, but now I'm covered under the blood. When God see you, he don't see your sin. He see if you're covered by the blood. When you go up in heaven, he ain't going to see what you did. He going to say, are you covered by my son's blood? Don't you know how precious that blood is? What? If you knew that you'd be walking tall, you may not have nothing in your refrigerator, but I'm walking tall. Cause I'd rather not have nothing in my refrigerator with him than without him. I'd rather be broke with him than without him. I'd rather have no gas with him than without him. Somebody say the blood. blood. I'm going to give you a revelation this morning. Help me out, Pastor Ford. But he entered the most holy place once and for all by his own blood, Come having on. obtained eternal redemption. Come on, eternal redemption. Having obtained eternal. See, y'all don't understand it. Y'all miss y'all shouting hallelujah right there. Because he redeemed us by the blood of the lamb. Go ahead, Pastor Ford. Is that the, it? That's 13. Okay, keep going. You got one more. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean. Mm -hmm. Sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. See, they were outwardly clean with that heifer. Somebody say heifer. heifer. They was outwardly clean. But go ahead, Pastor Four. How much more then will the blood of Christ... Hold it. Y'all got an ink pen? Please underline this. This is my text right here. Verse 14. Go ahead. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciousness from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. So that we may serve the living God. You got to be covered by the blood. Your mind got to be transformed. It got to be covered by the blood in order for you to serve God. If you take that blood lightly, you're going to give up quick. But if you know what it really is and what it really did, you can't do enough for God. You can't do enough for him, church. Commit. What does that mean? Commit. To give in trust. To put into the hands or power of another. To entrust with. To commit thy way to the Lord, Psalms 37. Commit with integrity. God got to be able to trust you with the blood. Can he trust you with the blood? Can he trust you with the blood? The blood of Jesus Christ is central to the New Testament concept of redemption. What are you talking about, Pastor White? Ephesians chapter 2, 13 says, but now in, I'm sorry, my eyes is getting weak. In Christ Jesus, we who was worse once were far, so far away from God. We have been brought near to Jesus Christ by his blood. That's what Ephesians 2.13 says. Put down 1 Peter 1.2 and Revelation 7.14 for those of you who just need a little bit more revelation. On the cross, Christ shed his innocent, somebody say innocent, blood in order to remove our sins and to reconcile us 
with God. Pastor Ford, go to Ephesians. I'm sorry, Hebrews 5, 8. To remove our sins and to reconcile us unto God. It's only by the blood of Jesus Christ. 5, 8. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. For all who obey him. Is that the, that you, you done with eight? Yes, ma'am. All right. For all those who obey him. You could say, well, I'm covered by the blood, but are you obeying him? If you're not obeying him, you ain't covered no more. You got to keep getting covered every Sunday. Because during the week, you lose it. And that blood turns into water. And it gets weak. Because you don't appreciate the blood. You don't trust in the blood. You're leaning to your own understanding. What? Why do you think that you can solve your problems without God? Who are you? Who are you? You try to make it without him. He says the ways of a transgressor is hard. I don't care how many cars they got, how many houses they have. The ways of a transgressor is hard. Are you covered by the blood today? Do you know what it means to be covered by the blood? Do you really know what is done for you? Write down the blood on your paper, please. Do you really know? I know what is done for me. And oh God, help me to keep that blood where it's supposed to be. Help me, Lord God, today. His blood, listen to this, forgives the sin of all who repent and believe. Write that down. His blood forgives the sin of all who repent and believe. Matthew 26, 28. Jesus says, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. When Jesus blood, you know, when they tapped them in the side, they just thought he was they, trying to kill them. Jesus had already laid down his life, but they just wanted to poke him some more because they just were not satisfied. But see, when they stabbed them in that side, amen, according to God's permissive will, that blood was forgiven me, you. It started healing. It started delivering. And he went to hell to set the captives free with that blood. Amen? Oh, somebody say the blood. Come on, say the blood. If you cover by the blood, can't nobody touch you, please. If you don't know nothing else and hear anything else I say to you today, if you cover by the blood, no weapon truly formed against you will prosper. He didn't say they wouldn't form. He said they won't prosper. Amen? Because see, your faith got to be tried by fire. That's what my message next week is, the fire. Ah, some of us going through fire now. But when you commit it to the blood, he'll be in that fire with you. Come on, somebody. When you're going through the valley of the shadow of death, you know when you can't hold your head up sometime. Come on, y'all. Ready to kill yourself? I'm going to die. Help me, Lord. All I can say is plead the blood. Your babies are sick. Mama, daddy, I don't care who they sick. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. By his stripes are you healed in the name of the Lord. And leave it alone. And let God heal you. Stop bugging them with it. Just trust them. He know what you need before you ask. But he said ask. And you shall receive. Why are you worrying about Tomorrow. Tomorrow have enough problems within itself. Tomorrow may not ever come. January 29th may not come. 
See what I'm saying? But if you're covered by the blood and he coming out of the clouds, you're going to go and meet him in the air and you're going to tell that judge, see ya. What? I don't believe he's going nowhere. I, 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 I just don't believe it. I don't believe, he, I don't believe he's going anywhere. I don't believe it, Pastor. I don't believe it. Saturate yourself, brother, in the blood of the Lamb. See, we're overcomers by the what? We overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, right? Come on, somebody. That blood gotta gotta be just more than just our blood. You know, when we bleed, we just bleed. Say, man, be all dirty. But Jesus' blood was pure. It was pure. Amen? Our blood is dirty. But his blood is pure. Amen? Hallelujah. His blood. Put that down. Another his blood. I got eight bloods for you tonight, today. His blood ransoms all believers from the power of Satan and evil powers. I'm going to give you some scripture verses, but Pastor Ford turned to 1 Peter 1.18. But write down these other scripture verses for y'all who's scared of people putting curses on you. Acts 20.28, 20, Ephesians 1.7, Revelation 5.9. And Revelations 12, 11. Let me tell you something right now. If I have to be afraid of what somebody's going to do to me. And I'm in the Lord. If I have to be afraid. Then why do I need God? You hear what I'm saying? Now I know we afraid of roaches. And you know. Because roaches that take over your crib. Come on somebody. But come on have your way. <laughs> I'll be back. Y'all do what y'all got to do. <laughs> I'm going to Mickey D's, you know. Amen? What I'm talking about, them, you know what I'm saying. Maybe no don't roaches that take presidents in your crib. What? Y'all let me try to act like y'all tough because y'all got on a tie today. Let a roach meet you at the door. We're going to see how bad y'all are. Some of y'all be talking about you full of the Holy Ghost. Let a dog come after you. <laughs> y'all ain't going to be talking about Jesus. My daughter will see a dog a mile away. Leave her children and her husband. And start running. And it be like this, like a rat with fur. But like a little old dog like this. It looked like a rat with fur. Arf, 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 arf. They don't even have a real bark. And she running. And my daughter, she's a manager, you know, at a really nice place, shack, and all of them live over there. Man, look at him. At one time, she was showing a place to somebody. That was before she became a manager. And she was, let me, show, let me show you this apartment. And Lassie was around the corner. My daughter left the lady that was supposed to rent the place. Her children. Did she, did she rent it, Lexi? Well, I don't know, mom, but I was gone. Full of the Holy Ghost. Gotta have the blood, baby. I know you got on red, but we need Jesus' blood. Hey, it's gonna be all right, sugar. He will, look, that blood will, you will escape the evil powers. You will escape Satan. You, I don't care what people are telling you. Stop believing in curses. Stop it. All that foolishness. In Florida, they really scared. I mean, y'all, look, I'm from Wisconsin. I came here with cheese. Come on, somebody. Y'all afraid of these people. And they give you the eyes. A curse is coming. 
And then you get scared. What? That could be in a Nene, they can. I'm serious. You could talk to somebody on the phone and they say, no, don't you do this now. You're going to die tomorrow. You better do this. What? Jesus said, he come to give me life and life more abundantly. What you talking about? Anybody ever say to y'all again, they're going to put some chicken bones by your door. Say in the blood of Jesus Christ, I bind you up Satan in the name of Jesus. You better start speaking the word. See, the word ain't going to work for you until you work the word. Ah, oh, that blood is so precious. I can't even really cover all the blood. Man, that's a year message. I'm just trying to break it down to you in a half an hour. It forgives us. And it, 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 it frees us from the power of Satan and evil powers. Y'all know there's a lot of evil powers out here. See, he's the prince of the air. But can I tell you something? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And what Satan does, guess who give him the power to do it? Abba Father. He got to go ask permission. Well, why do God let this happen? Because see, the Holy Ghost keep telling you to live right and to, and to, and to do right and, and, and to be right and to don't do this and to don't do that the holy ghost talking to you every day are you listening so then you just just ignoring what the holy ghost is saying so then god says it's not my perfect will now my perfect will is that you become the head and not the tail you'll be blessed going in and blessed going out you'll be going blessed being in the fields and in the city see that's my will for you that have Satan up under your feet. But because you keep rebelling, my hands, <sighs> I got to allow my permissive will to happen because you're not trusting in my blood. What is happening to me? Are you committed to the blood? Don't ask why. Always look at yourself when you're going through something. But we always want to blame God and the pastor too. That devil, you know what? Don't never look at yourself though. You running your mouth too much. You cussing on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You living like the devil and then try to come to church looking like a saint. We know you a goat. Come on, somebody. The real church of Jesus Christ? We're sheeps. And the sheep hear his voice. And the sheep know that you're a goat. See, the sheep be saying, victory is mine. Hey! Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. With no money, with no food, with no gas. I ain't talking about, no, I'm not talking about when you got everything, they still coming in. Do we got room back there for them? Jesus. Say it's harvest time. Come on now. Come on. Say it's harvest time. Harvest time. That's why I know some of y'all is covered by the blood and some of y'all covered by water. I, I, could, t I could tell by your praise. See, you ain't gonna be saying victory is mine when you don't have nothing and you a goat. Yeah, victory was mine, but you know what? I don't know what's going on now. <laughs> that devil is alive for real. See, it ain't when you praise him when you got everything. See, that ain't what a test coming at. It's when you ain't got nothing. Somebody say nothing. <laughs> that 
That's when victory is mine. Huh? It's easy to, you know, like when you got a whole bunch of money, you have a whole bunch of friends, relatives you never knew you had, and another mother coming, and then another daddy say, uh-uh, I'm your daddy for real. <laughs> You're like, what? But when you don't have nothing, see ya. No friends, relatives, what? Where they at? See what I'm saying? Sheep and a goat. Sheep say bad. Goat say bad. Look to your neighbor and say, are you a goat today? Say, let me hear your bad. Make them say bad. Come on. They could be worshiping and they going, but you going, this is the day they going this. You hear what I'm saying? Ah, did I get to my scripture verse? Did he read it? Peter 1 18. Read it. Pastor for first Peter 1 18. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Yes. Y'all hear that? Without blemish or effect. Put down the blood again. Come on, put down his blood. One more blood. Come on, I got about eight for you. I'm going to hurry up. I'm trying, I promise you. But the longer I take, it seems like the more coming in. So I might as well just keep going. His blood justifies all who believe in him. Romans 3, 24 through 25. He justifies you. I don't care if somebody be talking about you. I know what you dad did last week and I knew you before you was born. But wait a minute, baby. I'm born again now. I'm justified by his blood. I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things has passed away. Behold, all things become new. But I knew you when you was living with Uncle Ray Ray. And? Now Jesus is my, they're going to always try to bring up your past. But God, the, Paul says, I leave the past behind. And I press on towards the mark, towards the high calling that God has called me to. I ain't just talking about no press when you ain't got no gas in your car. That ain't pressing. I'm talking about that pressing when everybody leave you. Family, friends, ain't got nothing, no job, ain't got nothing. Are you going to still trust God? That's press. Somebody say press. Come on, push your hand and say press. Say press, self, press. Tell yourself to press. Because you're still covered by the blood. Trying to do it yourself, that's your problem. You're going to stay in that mess because the flesh is a mess. You're going to stay in that mess until you be covered, truly covered from head. I don't care if you got on weed, that'll be covered too. To the soles of your feet. When you drenched in that thing and it's dripping from you. Then you become more than a conqueror. Then you become an overcomer. I mean, I'm telling you, I would talk about Job. Job lost everything he had. But the fact that he know, he says, I came in naked, I leave naked. I know that stuff didn't belong to me, no how. Daddy gave me that. If daddy want to take it, he can. But see, a lot of y'all want to make it your own. My house, my car my kids them kids belong to God you just step parents my 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 you better start saying God because when it's gone then you can say well God gave it to me and God could take it away amen amen so Job I mean you know he didn't have nothing but at the end 
God gave him what? Double for his trouble. And I ain't talking about double mint gum. Gave him double riches? More family? I felt sorry for that sister that was delivering though. Because she had to deliver a lot. Amen? Amen. When Paul and them, when they was in prison with Silas, they didn't give up. They knew that what they was preaching was the power of God unto men. They knew what they was preaching was the only way to live. They knew what that blood cost. That's why uh, uh, prison doors begin to open up. See what I'm saying? Then the, the head guy got saved and his family. That blood was so strong it shook all the prison doors open. What? All y'all got to do is believe in the blood. Slap somebody and say believe in the blood. Say believe in the blood. I'm going to say blood so much to you today. Ladies, I hope you're all right. <laughs> you know, women don't want to hear nothing about no blood. Yeah, no. Ladies, come on, say, yeah, no. <laughs> See, but that blood, is, let me go here. Uh-uh, let me go ahead. Uh-uh, y'all ain't, y'all ain't get me there today. Uh-huh. Did we read Romans 3, 24 through 25? Oh, go ahead, Pastor 4, because it really does justify us. <laughs> huh? Why? Well, go ahead. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Uh-huh and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ, by Christ Jesus. Hold it, y'all turn there. Hold it, you done? Turn there. Romans, what is it, chapter six? Chapter three. Chapter three, 24 through 25. Y'all need to underline that when somebody's saying that you ain't covered by the blood, always bringing your past up. That devil is alive, I've been justified. If that's the case, what? Y'all can all point your finger at me. Read that over again, Pastor Four. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Hold it. Y'all know how you get them people. I ain't did nothing wrong. I'm a good person. That devil is crazy. Amen. God said, all have sinned. And falling short of the glory of God. I know grandma sometimes want to act like she ain't sinned. And you know the one that's judging you all the time. They act like they don't do nothing wrong. But the Bible says. All. Somebody say all. All. Not some. All. All. That's grandma. Uncle Billy. Slick Willie. Juicy Jimmy. Amen. You know how somebody always trying to be better than you? I know y'all had one of them in your life before. You know, like they ain't did nothing. But your sin is greater than mine. Wait a minute. There ain't no sin greater than the other. If you steal an ink pen and you kill somebody, it's the same sin. So they try to judge you because they sin is less than yours. That devil is crazy. Sin is sin. Help me, Pastor Four. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Uh-huh. And are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Uh-huh. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. Mm, that's 25. Left the sins committed unpunished. Are y'all with me today? Put down his blood again. What else does it does? What else does it do? 
it sanctifies God's people. God's people now. Everybody say, well, I'm God's people. Have you made him your Lord and Savior yet? You ain't God's people. Well, God created me. Yeah, he have, but he ain't your father until you make him your Lord and Savior. And if you haven't made him your Lord and Savior, guess who your daddy is? Of the devil. I don't do nothing wrong. Yes, you do. We just read all have sinned. Amen. Amen. You better know who your daddy is today. Where you getting that from, Pastor White? First John 1, 7 through 10. He sanctifies. Read it for me, Pastor Four. He didn't know he was going to be standing up this much today. I got some good ones for you. Y'all just bear with me today. Just bear with me. One, seven through ten. Come on. First John, one, seven through ten. But if we walk in the light mm. as he is in the light, come on. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Mm. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. Come on. And the truth is not in us. Mm. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins mm -hmm. and purify us from all unrighteousness. Mm. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word has no place in our lives. And his word have no place in our lives. If we try to say we don't have no sin, all you got to do is confess your sins. He said he is faithful and just to forgive you. I don't care what you've done. If you really confess your sin unto God, he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Bottom line, just confess it. Sometimes we can't even confess our sin. We so proud, we just, you know, that's some foolishness to me. Why would you want to carry your sin? And he tells you to cast all your cares upon him because he careth for you. Why? Do you want to carry it? I write, write down another his blood. His blood does what? Opens the way for believers to come directly. Oh, I love this. Before God, through Christ, in order to find grace, mercy, help, and salvation. I know I'm going fast. If you need the CD, they are free in this house. His blood opens the way for believers to come directly. Be oh, this is good. Pastor Ford, turn to Hebrews chapter 10 directly before God through Christ in order to find what grace mercy help salvation I'm gonna give you a couple of more scripture verses Ephesians 2 13 Hebrews 7 25 but we're going to Hebrews mm, 10 19 get your ink pens and underline this this is good stuff this is what we live by is the blood go ahead pastor Forrest start with verse 19 and keep going until I tell you to stop Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. Hold it. We can enter into the most holy place only by the blood of Jesus. When he died on that cross and he said, it is finished. The curtain tore in two. And we was able to go into the holy of holies. We don't need a priest, priest trying to confess our sins to God. What? You better confess your own sin. And the priest too. Come on, somebody. Why are you going to a man? I can't never understand that. Why would you go to a man, get behind a curtain, and confess your sin to that person? Who does that person go to when they confess their sin? God, right? Well, then why can't we go to God? He tells us to work out our own salvation. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor Four. Y'all listen to this. It's good stuff. By a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart. Listen, underline that with a sincere heart. So you can't come half hearted. You got to come with a sincere heart. If your heart ain't right, then God going to send you back. And say, uh-uh, you got to ask God to create in you a clean heart and renew a right spirit within you. Amen? Amen. Underline that today. Go ahead, Pastor Ford. 
let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, mm. having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. Mm. For he who promised is faithful. For he who promised that he will complete a good work in you until the day of Christ Jesus is faithful. You can't do it. If you can do it, then why did Jesus die? Why? Y'all need to really think about that. If you can do it, then, then why, why do you even praise the Lord then? Why do you come to church? Why? If you can do it. You feel I could do it for somebody else, but how come I can't do it for you? Amen? Keep going. Did you go to 25 already, sir? Go ahead. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds mm. let us not give up meeting as some are in the habit of doing but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching as you see the day approaching encourage one another he says let us not give up meeting together as the manner of some we touched on that earlier today but let us come together in the house of the Lord because he said faith cometh by what were you hearing it? Okay. I'm just asking. Yeah, faith can come by reading too, but he said faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, if you keep hearing something over and over and over again, you're going to believe it eventually. Even a lie. Come on, put down his blood again. His blood is a guarantee of all the promises of the New Testament this is really good his blood is a guarantee of all the promises of the new covenant Hebrews 13 20 pastor 4 Hebrews 13 20 listen to this he guarantee is a guarantee of all the promises of the New Testament do you know the promises of God? Because if you knew the promises of God, you wouldn't give up so easy. You would trust him if you really believe in the promises of God. Hebrews 13, 20. Help me, Pastor Four. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep mm. equip you with everything good for doing his will mm -hmm. and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory forever and ever forever and ever the saving reconciliation and purifying power of Christ's blood is continually appropriated to believers let's keep it down as they come to God through Christ Hebrews 7, 25, 10, 22, for the sake of the CD. 1 John 1, 7. 1 Peter 4, 19 says, So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit to their faithful creator and continue to do good. We got to continue to go do good and commit ourselves to our faithful creator. Some of us want to worship the creation, but we don't want to worship the creator. Some of us treat dogs better than we treat people. Come on now. You touch somebody's dog or cat. They'll beat you up, but yet they're killing babies. That was before I was covered in the blood. Come on, Deacon. Oh, he ain't got no chair no more. I'm sorry. <laughs> Your chair. Praise the Lord. First Peter 4, 19. Uh, Psalms 37. Y'all write, write them down because you can. So, come on now. Come on, Pastor Ford. Read that thing. Psalms 37. 
4 through 5. Read it for me, Pastor 4. See, we learn in this church, and all of our getting, God says what? Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. Do four again. One more time. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. One more time. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. One more time. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. One more time. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. One more time. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. What's the misunderstanding? All you got to do is delight yourself in the Lord. And he'll, whatever you, what you want this morning? What do you need this morning? What do you want? What do you need? I'm talking about besides Jesus. What do you want and what do you need so bad? If you delight yourself in the Lord, this is a promise. He said he'll give us the desires of our heart. He will. But see, we're not delighting ourselves in the Lord. Maybe on two Sundays and Wednesdays. But what about the rest of the week? Go ahead, Pastor Ford. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. Hold it, hold it. And he will do this. I love that. Read that one more time. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will do this. He will do what? He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn. The justice of your cause like the noonday sun. That's it, right, Five. Amen. Praise God. He will do this. I did a message on Psalms 91. It says, he who dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God. You got to dwell in that secret place in the most high God every day. Amen. He will keep your foot from slipping. I promise you. Proverbs 16, 3 says, commit to the Lord, whatever you do and your plans will succeed. Second Chronicles 69 says, for the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those who hearts are fully, somebody say fully, committed unto him. He ain't going to strengthen your heart if you're not fully committed unto God. Why am I going through this? Are you fully committed to God? Yes or no? Ain't no gray area. I can't live this life. No, you can't put that flesh down. Just living this Christian life, this thing, you know, this thing too hard. Because you're trying to play trickery with God. That's why it's hard. How can he keep me from drugs and all that stuff for 21 years? How can he do that? If it's so hard. I spent thousands of dollars. Well, I let them spend thousands of dollars. I was a smart junkie. I always went with the dealer. Come on, somebody. How can he keep me if his blood wasn't what it said it is? I was just as weak as y'all were in my sin. I'm telling you, that stuff had me so crazy. Y'all know what I'm talking How many of y'all ex-drug addicts? alcoholics huh you know it had you crazy sleeping with everybody and anybody long as you can fix me I'll fix you some of us trying to do it in the Lord because we ain't really trusting in the blood we used to our old ways hustling hustling God want to deliver you from that because he said I'm Jehovah Jireh your provider you ain't got to hustle in God all you got to do is be still and know that he is God either you committed to him or you're not did he say the road gonna be easy I don't believe he brought me this far to lead me Nobody told me the road would be easy. 
And I don't believe he brought me this far to lead me. If I had a God that I couldn't just believe him for everything, I couldn't serve him. I just couldn't. You know what I'm saying? I just came. I'm too weak for that. He got to be with me in the good time, in the bad time, in the ugly time, in all kind of times. He can't say, I ain't going to talk to you now because you angry. <laughs> you know how don't nobody talk to you when you get upset. You start shaking. <laughs> Y'all know, come on, we get an attitude, ain't nobody going to. See you probably tomorrow. You'll be all right. But Jesus stick closer than a brother. He says, have love and kindness. Have I compelled them? I compel them by my love. What? You know a friend will leave us when we start shaking pasta. Acting crazy like we need a fix. What? But Jesus will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll be there with you all the time. Why can't you commit to the blood? He keep your foot from slipping. He forgive you of your sins. He went to hell for you. He justifies you. He sanctifies you. He make you more than an overcomer. He makes you a, a more than a conqueror. He said, if God is for you, who can be against you? He said, nothing can separate you from my love. He said, I'll complete a good work in you. You don't even have to do it. Until the day of Christ Jesus. He'll be faithful when you're faithless. He wakes you up in the morning. You're breathing because of the Holy Ghost. You think you're breathing because of oxygen? What? You can't even drink water out of the sink anymore. What makes you think the air is clean? You better know it's the Holy. <laughs> it's allowing you to breathe today. Some of you with that same breath, you cussing God out. There's a lot of people reject God with that breath that God gives them. He gives them the breath to re so they can reject him with it. That's some deep stuff right there. And he still loves you anyway. In spite of. Because his mercies is new. Every morning. Now you know good and well God can kill us all right now. Each and every one of us don't deserve his grace. What? We don't deserve his mercy. You really think you deserve? No, come on now. Do you really think you deserve? You got to be kidding you really think I deserve you don't deserve nothing but hell bottom line I did all this what you did what give up your fornication your lustful spirit your lying tongue what you give up your conniving ways <laughs> what you really giving up <sighs> for the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed unto him I promise you go to first Kings this is it chapter 8 this is my baby back there First Kings. Come on, those of you who know the books of the Bible, you ought to know what First Kings is. Solomon at that time stood and blessed the whole assembly of Israel with a loud voice. First Kings 8. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up.
Solomon was just blessing everything. He had a prayer dedication. He was just, he just, he was, they brought the temple and they were just blessing the temple. And he was blessing everything. I said, God, let me, let me be able to bless your people. You know, like the Jabez prayer, we pray that thing. Well, if Jabez prayer is for us, then first Kings is for us. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. Well, pastor, why don't you pray? No, I'm going to pray this right here. This is the word. First Kings. Eight, starting with 54. It says, when Solomon had finished all these prayers and supplication to the Lord, he rose from before the altar of the Lord, where he had been kneeling with his hands spread out towards heaven. He stood and blessed the whole assembly of Israel in a loud voice saying, so I'm going to bless you today with the same prayer. Is that okay? Is that okay? Can I bless you with the same prayer today? Can I bless you with the same prayer today? Praise be to the Lord who has given rest to his people, Israel. I'm going to say Miami, Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Just as he promised, not one word has fell of all the good promises he gave through his servant Moses. Not one word fail. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. See, I'm bringing it home. May he never leave us nor forsake us. May he turn our hearts to him to walk all in all his ways and, the, and to keep the commandments decrees and regulations he gave our fathers and many I'm sorry and may the words of my mind which I have prayed before the Lord be near to the Lord our God day and night that he may uphold the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel according to each day's need he'll supply your need so that all the peoples of the earth may know, oh, here it is, that the Lord is God and that there is no other. There is no other, but your hearts must be, what does it say? Fully. What does it say? Fully, Fully what? fully committed underline that but your hearts must be fully committed to the Lord our God to live by his decrees and obey his commands at this time if it ain't fully committed the blessings of the Lord will not be upon you. The curses of the Lord will be. Instead of getting mercy, you will get judgment. Instead of getting grace, you will be tortured. Because it's his perfect will for you to live right and to obey and to trust him. It's his permissive will when you disobey him that all hell break loose. See, God don't want that for you. He really want to love you. He really does. He wants you to have the peace of God that transcends all understanding. He said, he who keep his mind stayed on me, I will keep him in perfect peace. If your mind is crazy today, that's because your mind got off of God. I'm a living testimony. How can he keep me? If he can't keep you. That devil is a lie. I was strung out. If God just stepped in, I believe I would have been living a lesbian lifestyle. I would have been one of them. I believe that with all my heart. Y'all ain't gonna hear no preachers talk like me. Because I'm about the kingdom of God, not my kingdom. I don't have no agendas but to set your behind free that you may have life more abundantly. I would have been one of them ones out there. Oops. 
shocked some of y'all, didn't I? But because of the blood of Jesus Christ, he set me free and keeping me free. And I can only thank him because see, I'm not worthy of this robe. I know I'm not. But because of the blood of Jesus Christ, he sanctifies me. He justifies me. He present me as, spot, as, as spot, spotless and then without wrinkle before God. When God see me, he don't see Pastor White sin, he sees the blood. That's why can't nobody touch you. That's why can't nobody put no curse on you. That's why can't nobody boil no chicken and put all that mess on you. They can't do it. Cause you're covered by the blood. Let them boil five chickens. I don't care, invite me over for dinner. My, 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 my. <laughs> Fry that sucker and throw the bones away. I eat the chicken, curse oh. that. Come. Fry me some chicken, Tyra. That girl can cook right there. Don't let her fool you. I eat her Jesus. cursed chicken any day. Come on, somebody. What? Curse me a turkey, Tyra. Curse me some greens, baby. Blessed in the name of Jesus. Can nobody cook no greens like the what? Uh uh. I ain't never taste no greens like mama them until I tried Tyra's. Y'all see, Deacon and Eddie done gained some weight since they got married. Come on, somebody. That brother swollen now. It ain't no <laughs> muscles. Uh uh. He's trying to make it in that shirt today, y'all. Amen. 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 Tyra be feeding her husband. Amen. Grab somebody's hand. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Close us out, Pastor. Close us out. Close Most us gracious out. and heavenly Father. Lord God, Father, we have come together, Lord God. Father God, we have praised and worshiped, Lord God. Father God, we have heard the word from Pastor White, Lord God. Father God, right now, Lord God, Father God, we ask you, Lord, Father God, if you will just cover us, Lord God, the rest of this day, Lord God, the rest of this year, Lord God. Father God, we ask you, Lord God, that you would place a hedge around our vehicles, Lord God, as we depart your house, Lord God. Take us to our destinations and our homes, our jobs, Lord God. Father God, and as we enter into these other places, Lord God, allow somebody to see the light of you. Lord God, and that they will want some of what we got. Yes. Father God, and we, we give you all the praise, Come on. glory, and honor in your magnificent, majestic name. Yes. Through your son named Jesus the Christ. Yes. With the aid of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, and the church said, Amen. Lift up your hands. Amen. Say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. That you will bless me indeed. And that you will bless me indeed. That you will wide my territories. Keep me from evil. That I may walk in your peace. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Love somebody before you go. And yes, give the Lord a hand. Love somebody before you go in the house of the Lord. Thank you for joining us in the spirit. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Kingdom Agenda Worship Center. With Senior Pastor Felicia White. Contact us today. 305-654-8760. That's 305-654-8760. Or come visit us at 850 Isbury Road, Suite T19 through 21. Inside the California Club Mall, Miami, Florida. 33179. Check out our website at www.kingdomagenda.org. And email us at kingdomagendaministries at juno.com. Kingdom